if it was illegal to say stupid things into a microphone. Why must you be so stupid? These guys would be doing life without parole. Hey, everybody, we're back from prison. Why do we keep encouraging this kind of behavior? It's the Breaking the Ice podcast with Josh Dolan. You know, we could, like, go to jail for this. Along with Mike Shu and Isaiah Moscahanna Bonsa Mana Blitz Boskowitz. Whatever the hell his name is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, look, now, oh, yeah. now there's light. How's that? How's that it's background? Huh? Strong. Huh? Huh? That How's that for good. shameless self promotion? That's it. Hey, can you do the weather? I can, actually. Uh, it's a whole bunch of shit, and then there's going to be some more shit. Back to you. It's All right. been so nice out, though. It's been like. Oh, my God. Out. Really nice. Yeah, I'm, every day there's no snow. I'm thankful for. Are you disc golfing? Like, well, you work all day, but are you disc golfing at all on the weekends? Uh, just on Sundays. Oh, so not, I've been playing yeah, golf as much as humanly Sunday. possible. Yeah, I was gonna try to do it today, but I had shit to do. My daughter wanted to make flaming hot Cheeto onion rings. So, Ooh, uh, talk to me about that recipe. Say that again: flaming hot Cheeto, Cheeto rings. onion rings. Right, right. Um work in progress so do you yeah. crush up flaming hot cheetos and then <laughs> yeah you, so you crush up flaming hot cheetos and I, ideally you dip the onion rings in flour egg and then the flaming hot cheetos Ooh. and then you put them in the hot oil and they came out pretty good but then the flaming hot cheetos got gunked like the it got gunked up with the egg and so it started getting kind of globby and then we decided to try to mix it up into an actual batter and those came out okay, but there was no flaming hot Cheeto taste in them. It was weird. You didn't use almond milk, did you? No, no. Yeah, because no. I've tried doing a few recipes, and all we have is almond milk, and it just that ruins sucks. everything. No, almond milk. Go buy some whole milk. You can't cook with almond milk. No, you I mean, can't. drinking it's fine. You know, putting it in your coffee's fine. It ruins eggs. Yeah, no, it ruins coffee you know. too. You can't just you can't cook with it. You I wouldn't recommend milk. ruining Wolfpack coffee with <laughs> almond milk. Matt would be pissed. <laughs> One of our sponsors, Wolfpack Coffee, don't ruin it with almond milk. Also, hey, happy Veterans Day. Coffee. Huh? You what, Josh? I said happy Veterans Day to Wolfpack Coffee. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yes. Happy Veterans Day. Thank you, Wolfpack Coffee, veteran owned and operated. We appreciate that. Thank you to all the veterans. I was and down at Hill Park in uh, Worcester today. They have the Vietnam, Massachusetts Vietnam Veterans Memorial there, and they were just uh, wrapping up a, a ceremony. Nice. And um, the guys there weren't too happy about it because usually there's a few hundred people there. Yeah. But it was one of those things where like, they had to tell the public to stay away, which kind of yep. sucked. Spectrum News was there covering it, you know, but it was just kind of like, you know this this year is a shit mess yeah Total shit mess yeah. but they were there in full regalia man they were there the white gloves nice you know, shirts pressed looking like a million dollars out there making it work you know just being who and they that's, are. A, that's a vietnam memorial that's the Ma the massachusetts vietnam memorial is in oh. green hill park in worcester and it is i suggest everybody go there not just for veterans day i didn't even know green, that green hill park is a beautiful park we used to have local bazooka there way way back in the day but um where the memorial is it's just a beautiful area and it's so well designed and they have kind of rough columns of stone and in front of a, a long kind of irregular shaped pond with a beautiful walkway around it and on the columns of stone they're they're rough on some sides, and then on the smooth sides, they print all the names of the people, I believe, from Massachusetts who died uh, in Vietnam. And then they have another set of uh, stone columns, irregular stone columns on the opposite side, like when you first walk in. And it's so moving. It's, it's letters from soldiers oh, wow. back home. And some of them are uh, a couple, I think, are uh, were dated, written on the day they died. Oh shit! And it's just you know letters to their mothers and their wives and their brothers and sisters and family, best friends. It's just, and it's such a beautiful, beautiful place. The city and whoever designed it did such a great job with it. And then there's a very small memorial, and this gets me every time. Over four thousand dogs were used. Mm by the military in Vietnam. It was very important. You're in the jungle. You need a dog to kind of sniff it out. Dog, 
tunnel warfare, yep. all that stuff, you know, bunkers, <laughs> things like that. And unfortunately, they couldn't bring any of them back. Oh, God. And most of them had to be destroyed. Yeah. So they have a memorial there for those dogs, which I think is excellent. Yeah. The, the, oh, I, I, like I'll, these dogs and, and military dogs, I feel like they never get like recognition like that. Like right. once in a while, you'll see one on the news and everyone like salutes it and then you cry like a baby. But, you know. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. But this is it's a nice little memorial. It's weird, though, because you're not allowed to walk your dog around the memorial. No. But they have the memorial for the dogs there. So well, because it would well, be like us walking through the Vietnam memorial and then peeing on it, you know. Right. My, you clean up after your dog. It's not you know, geez, oh, don't man. take a shit on the grave. I know. Well, and so what a day today. Have... Well, I mean the 70s today to be able to go out and see these things and be out. So thank you to all yeah. the veterans, man. What a yeah, I was, was out, nice. I work with the I work with the DAV. So I was out in um out in Gardner actually today at one of their uh, one of their facilities and just it's crazy. Like every day should be Veterans Day. It's like we always say about Mother's Day. Every day should be Mother's Day for your mother. You right. Know? Yeah. Like you take, it's it's uh, it's cool to sit. And I had some I had some time with a veteran who served in Vietnam, yeah. an older guy. And just it's just like the shit that we go through, the stuff that we've done, really first world problems. Shut the fuck up. These people have fought and battled for the shit that we're mm -hmm. able to do today. So thank you. They saw yes. things and dealt with things we can't even wrap our oh, hands around. Like wow. like today, I'm like I'm I was complaining to my wife just because I was uh, the almond milk. Was yeah. it the oh. almond milk? It was the almond milk. I was like, yeah. it's it's different. Why is it, it makes cold me enough? different. It's just it's not it's a true cold. omelet. It's watery. It makes my coffee <laughs> taste like urine. Can we get at least two percent next time from the store? <laughs> Why are we being careful with our milk? I know you're lactose intolerant. Take a lactate. Um, <laughs> well, these people have taken bullets for us. Yeah, they're they're taking. And I was trying to get. Um, I was reaching out to some of the veterans that I know, and you know, the World War II veterans they don't really have access to Zoom because why would they? Right. <laughs> right and then uh, i'll use my typewriter fuck off yeah and then i a, a lot of the vietnam veterans i i reached out like i feel like world war ii veterans will talk to you all i'm even if they don't mention some stuff they'll yep. talk to you all day about how they fought the nazis and the japanese right because yep. it was like a clear enemy but i feel like a lot of the the Vietnam vets that I reached out to they typically don't want to talk about any of it because I feel like all of them are like we shouldn't have been there yeah, well, yeah. You know, some, yeah. some may be better the way they were treated when they came back you oh know? god yeah, yeah night and day with how we treated good. veterans now night and best, day. uh best way to get a, a world war ii vet or a korean war veteran on the uh, podcast is to, you got to bring a camera down to your local dunks <laughs> well, actually, you, can't, you can't even do that you can't even do that anymore they don't let them sit around all day right. anymore and and you know discuss you know the news but there was always that table in the corner of those dudes you know just going off on whatever was in the news or whatever. I don't think like they ever that. drink the coffee. It just sits there steaming. Yeah. And that, right. they, in, I, I remember the Sears Town Mall used to have this big open center area, which is now a food court. Right. Yeah. That used to yep. just be filled with like old veterans <laughs> just yeah. telling stories. Yeah. I know. You're complaining that your, you know, your coffee doesn't have enough hazelnut syrup in it. Meanwhile, there's a guy behind you who had to skin a Nazi and wear his body, his, wear his skin to stay warm at friggin' Bastogne. You know, it's just like, how's your fucking almond milk? Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> We're at the Battle of the Bulge, and they had to cut off one of their fingers because it was frostbitten. Yeah, it was like black from frostbite. You know, and then they he he ate it basically. Yeah. You because know, they wanted to win. Right. Oh, but I'm sorry. Your croissant wasn't warm enough from Dunkin' Donuts, it really. Flaked into, it, it, my croissant flaked into my Ford Fusion. That's going to be My electric Ford Focus isn't going fast enough. So we have a Katie in the waiting room. Ooh, oh, now tell us who Katie okay. is, Mike. Who's Katie? So Katie is a really good friend of the family. Uh, we've known her for a long time. We were at her wedding. Remember that christening I forgot about? That was yeah, her, yes. Uh, Can we bring right? that up? So, yeah, sure. If you want to bring that up, I, you know, uh, hopefully my wife has a brain and remembered it. But hey, Mike, um, put your suit on that you use for two things: deaths and funerals. Yeah, funerals no, and, and court. Yeah, and uh, but she's she's just a, a really, uh, um, you know, she's hey. a she's a woman, and like, I just wanted to have her on because it's like it's always like you know, oh well, the elderly are getting sick from from COVID, or it's like people she's got COVID, she got it. Yeah, so it's like she's from the christening, perfectly healthy 
you know, 30, mid 30, <laughs> third to mid 30 year old woman. And she got it, you know, and she's dealing with it right now. And so while we're going through the surge. Oh, I was going to say the I, timing on this thing right now, these numbers right. are going through the fucking roof. And I just want to ask you guys, have you talked to anybody who's had COVID? Yes. I don't, I don't yeah. know anybody. Yep. So we, we know a friend of ours, Andy, we used to right. work with Andy, uh, his wife got COVID and, and they're oh, in their thirties. Um, she, well, she got it and went through a, a day or two of, of, of her time. And, and, and then it was gone. Another friend of mine who I work with in the media, um, uh, had it, her husband works for the city of Boston. So he's back and forth all day long, mm -hmm. right? And he has to take the tea. So there's more opportunities. <clears throat> and he came home and he had a really high fever. And then she had a really high fever and, and her high fever stuck around for about a week and she was miserable, right. miserable. Um, another friend of mine, I played golf with this past week, his daughter's boyfriend. So we're talking maybe mid thirties, actually might even be like early thirties, lost all taste, you know, got it and no. lost all taste. So, but the different symptoms for different things, there's really no pattern right. yet on like, Oh, right. this is yeah. what the flu feels like. You know, yeah, you get it in different levels. <clears throat> yeah. So, so a few people she's a really a good friend of the family. She's um, she actually, she okay. Uh, I think so. I mean, she's, oh, she's well enough to come on with us, but <laughs> Josh, uh, let's have her on the show. She's in the, oh, yeah, she's well, in the green she just, room. She just texted right. me. So yeah, bring her on. She's wondering what the hell's going on. I'll let her in. We're talking about we're, her. That's what's yeah. going. We're, we're, we're babbling like hens. Like we do. Yeah. She's in, but it's got a. I don't know if she can hear us. Hello. Hey, Katie. Hi, Katie. How's it going? Hi. Oh, there she is. Hey, Katie. How you doing? <coughs> hey, guys. Oh. How are you? I am. I know you coughed. I am alive. Yeah. That's a good start. That's what I say most days with. We're like, we're alive these days. <laughs> yes. Is this, is this, are you going to be able to talk with us for a little bit? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, tell yeah. us your story. You're good friends with Mike. Mike said that he almost missed your christening because that's the kind of shitty friend that he is. Well, I, I just, I just, I forgot, you know, luckily my wife has a brain in her head to remember. Uh, look, that Katie, kind of Katie, thing. you, you know, Mike, he gets so high. He forgets what day it is. You know, not, not so much. And, <laughs> really? You know, not so much. Yeah. I was, I was sober for the christening. I was. Yes. Completely. Well, my family calls it the exorcism and not the christening because my child. <laughs> That's a funny family, though. I love your family already. Because <laughs> <laughs> my child wouldn't um, sit still because we baptized him at two. So. Yeah, he's two. He's got legs at work. He wants to try them out. You know, whatever. That's he's why they do it when they're infants. When they, all they can do is like a little bit of this. You do it when I'm two, I'm gone. What's the water for? <laughs> There's right. the guy in the white robe. Get off of me. <laughs> <laughs> but that was, you know, you, you've been taking, I know, you know, we've, we, we've known each other for a long time and I know you've been super, super careful because of your kid, you know, so with, careful. With, yeah, you, you, you barely so left your house, you know, and, and, um, what happened? We've seen you a few times and, and it's just, but so, and you're, you're healthy. Well, not now, but you're a healthy person <laughs> yeah. in general, you know, you're, yeah. and, and so how, do you know how you, you contracted this or? I do. So I went to a very small gathering, less than 12 people. Mm. And I thought, you know, I don't want to out anyone, but someone there must have been sick and didn't yep. know it. And I got really, really sick three days later. Like describe really sick. Yeah, like how did it so, come on? The, so the first thing I felt was I had like a sore throat and a headache. So, and I slept with like the window cracked open. So I'm thinking maybe allergies or whatever. That was the third day for my exposure. And then the fourth day, the next day at four o'clock in the morning, I woke up and it literally felt like my hip was broken and my shoulder like someone stabbed me in all my joints my wrists my knees my um ankles even my toes my fingers everything hurt so like, bad. like a like sore like really sore the it, body yeah. aches are unreal yeah. are unreal that makes me nervous because I get bronchitis every year. And I know Katie for, you know, 10 years 
you know, the, the beginning of bronchitis is the body sores, right? So yeah. when, when those kick in and I'm a stupid guy, like every guy, I'll be fine. Well, the last few years I've been like, nah, no, but the body aches. I know that like when my legs start to ache, that's the first sign. But now you add in this COVID shit. If that happens, yeah. you must be like, oh my God, what's going to happen? Oh my God. The body aches were surreal. I woke Ugh. up at four in the morning and then I started shaking. Like I was shivering and my whole body started shaking. Like my teeth were chattering and um, I was like, something's not right. And then I was just sweating. I had like sweat stains and I was just sweating. And I was like, I have to go to the hospital though. So then I took my temperature um, and it was a uh, 102.8. That's not normal. No, that's far oh. from normal. 98 is normal, right? 97, 98. Yeah. yeah. So then it was, it was pretty high. And then um, I was like, I don't even, I, I almost felt delusional. So I was like, I got to go to the hospital. And I went into the hospital. I went to UMass Memorial. And um, right away, I, I walk in. The nurse said, well, this is at six in the morning. Because I was just so sick. Um, the nurse says, can I help you? Don't move. And they don't let you move from like, as soon as you enter in the emergency room and they have this weird closed off section. And she's like, can I help you? And I'm like, you know, I, I start to give her my symptoms. She goes, okay, you don't have to say anymore. Give them your ID and step into that pod. <laughs> so they get Step into the pod. Get into the right. helicopter. Into We're pod. done with you. Right. It's like, you're out. <laughs> yeah, they instantly like, make you go into like this pod in the emergency room. Sounds like a Star Trek episode. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then they dress up in like this full blown covered. Like, yeah. Like HVAC gear. Yeah. And then they take your vitals. And um, soon after that, I went in and then they do the COVID test and I was shaking so bad and they were it was so cold in there, but I don't know if it was me, me that was cold or if it was cold in the emergency room. And then um, they just seemed like it was just another day. Like, yeah, you probably have COVID. It's probably because they've seen so many people. Thousands and thousands point. of these things. That and they're happened. like, you're, you're young. <clears throat> we're just going to um, test you. They gave me a steroid. They said, well, we're going to give you the steroid immediately. Um, so your throat doesn't swell up. And, that would uh, be helpful so I can breathe. Appreciate that. <laughs> and then they gave me a, a cold medicine right away. And um, they took an x-ray. And then they just said, if you have trouble breathing it, I'll come back. Make sure you tell 911 you have COVID. And, and that, that was it. it. They sent me home. And then they sent you home. Drop your copay at the front desk and get out. Wow. Yep. And so they now gave, if they, they just they gave you you said they gave you cough medicine like what they give you like delsum or something like that they gave me hold on I can tell you exactly what there's some said. powerful shit they give you like when I get bronchitis they they give you these they give you these gel now this might be stronger but they give you these gel uh, cough things because you know bronchitis is a, right. a much smaller version of this yeah but it's yeah. but it's a lot it's it's like it's almost like um, cystic fibrosis for Christ's sake it's minus all you know what I mean? benzenite. Yeah, that's benzenite? some shit. That's some shit. Jeez. So they give they gave me benzenite to take three times a day. Now, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you, Katie? I'm 37. Okay. <laughs> so, well, it's just so interesting how these reports are coming out of, of different again reports where they're coming from. I don't know what's right, what's wrong these days because you turn the media on and it's a shit mess. But you know, everybody's affected by this. Look at the spikes yeah. and the surge that are happening right now. It's insane what's going on. Uh, we let our guard down once since Fuck. March with a small, small group. And look how, looking back, it's really, it's not worth it at all. You know? And, I can't um, imagine what the what the spike is going to be like in two weeks because now the streets were flooded again. So it's like, yeah, right, right. Insane. Everybody got excited. Me, that's Everybody... insane. I was watching it on TV, you know, sick as a dog watching the people's and I know it's a happy thing to be celebrating but then oh, I'm thinking idea. like all these people are going to be so sick 
Did you see the Notre Dame game, the Notre Dame football game when they beat Clemson? That was insane. I was like, fuck, what are you doing? Right. And then like the Lakers, it's like it takes one second for everyone to be like, we got to be careful. We got, ooh, I'm happy about that. Let's go. Oh, my God. That's a tradition for Notre Dame and a lot of college football teams to do that. First of all, why were that many goddamn people at the game? Yeah. Okay. And then they beat Clemson, which I get is a huge deal. Thousands of kids pour on the field. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God, that's going to be a problem. And Josh is right. You don't hear about it for another week. And no, the spikes. So from their exposure, it will take three to four days till they start feeling symptoms. Okay. Um, and then it once you feel one symptom from it, it happens pretty quick. The body aches, the headaches, then uh, the upset stomach. Oh boy. Then the, the fever, uh, the chills. Um, then about, I'd say for me, day six, day five, day six. I'm on day nine now feeling sick. Uh, I this just happened nine the- days ago. The, the 31st I was exposed wow. and then uh the head cold and then the chest cold so it just lingers it doesn't go away it's like not my fever I thought it went away yesterday it's back um about the taste and smell taste and smell is that a thing I cannot taste a thing or smell a Thing. really Come nothing on. at all Fuck. nothing so it is the weirdest sensation eating something and not being able to taste it or smell it at all like you like what's your favorite what's your favorite food of all things like what chip is it what thing is it my favorite food of all time i love eggplant parm like so if you bite into that can't nothing. taste nothing That's not absolutely you can't you can't smell anything either. I can't smell a thing. I've been <clears throat> like putting on the diffuser just for like my lungs and and everything. And I will tell Bill, can you smell that? I don't think I put enough uh, eucalyptus in there. And he's like, he's no, like no more. Yeah, Bill <laughs> is her husband. Can, just to let you guys know, because um, I cannot smell or taste. We assumed it wasn't her two year old putting eucalyptus in. Thank you, though, Mike. No, so, I, 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 I feel like if I had those symptoms, I would use that opportunity to eat all the healthy things that I hate. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, this sure. is this is where Josh would have seafood because he he likes the idea of seafood, but then tastes it and freaks out. He'd be like, oh, my God, lobster. I want to like it so bad. <laughs> So what have you been doing to, to, to make, like, is the bot, are the body aches constant also? So I'm keeping track. Yeah. I have a piece of paper. Cause I forget like you have this brain cloud fogginess too. Like I keep forgetting things. It's weird. Um, yeah. So, yeah, a lot of people um, talk about that, that they they have, um, they, they hallucinate, they're delusional, I absolutely 100% was hallucinating at one point. So maybe Um, it's like an oxygen thing where it's affecting your brain or? For sure. And just this weird fatigue and uh, brain fog. I don't know what to call it. Um, We're all COVID COVID brain. We joke about it, but COVID brain is a real thing. Probably. It's it's completely real. So I write write down when I take Tylenol and I take it every four hours and I write down when I take ibuprofen does any of that help with the body aches well people kept telling me don't take ibuprofen with covid but i don't know what else to take to help <laughs> you're, like, hey, you're like hey fuck you my entire body aches i'll take it thank yeah. you we're good my, my we're blood good hurts so bad i'll take four i'm good <laughs> and i've also been eating my you know vitamins every day good elderberry vitamins i've been um so you're almost on your own though it's almost like they, like you go in and again, this is no disrespect to any medical facility, but they're like, okay, you're alive, you're breathing. This isn't all clogged completely. Call us if you can't breathe. Because I told you, Mike and, and Josh, before she came on, one of my other friends, I'll, I'll leave her name out of it, but she went in, her husband was sick, and then she got sick, and, and the same thing happened. They went in, and she said, they, they said, call us when you can't breathe. Call us what? when you can't breathe. Make sure you tell 911 you can't breathe. I'm like, when I can't breathe, I can't call 911. Fuck, what? And then right. it's too late, isn't it? They want you to call an ambulance. Oh, they that's... want you to call an ambulance and tell them you have COVID. That's what they told me. Where are and you? Where's, like, Bill Bill now? And what's your, what's your, as a son or daughter, sorry. 
my son's name is Bill. Bill. So Bill and Bill. So where, where are the Bills? They are in the living room right now. Now my son, he has very, very mild symptoms. A so minor, he, minor head cold. So he's got it too? Did he test positive? I, I haven't taken him to go get tested because I'm so sick. Right. Right. And they don't want me to leave the house. And what about Bill? Did they tell you to separate from Bill? They did, but that's impossible. Right. Reality kicks yeah. in. Life. Life. Life kicks in. We have yeah, right. a two-year-old. And um ah, Bill, just husband, go stay at the Best Western for two months. You'll be fine. <laughs> so when you go so when you go to the hospital, they inform the CDC you have COVID. And so mm. the CDC called me. Oh shit. I had all my information from the hospital. And they knew the people who lived in the house, how many people lived in the house. And so then they tell me, you know, they want a rundown of everything, where you were, who you might have affected, oh, yeah. and they want names and numbers. Did you have to give them the names and numbers of the 12? I, t I told them I, I will I contact seem to have those forgotten people. COVID brain. <laughs> I don't know if they're comfortable with me giving you their information. So I will promise I'll physically call them and tell them well, I have that's, COVID. That's, and then change that's your that's number the main, and never answer the phone well, again. Well, that's the main problem with the contact tracing is that, <laughs> you know, you, you don't know if these, you don't want to give out your friends and no, family's no, phone no, numbers. No. You know? I don't, I don't feel sure. comfortable doing that. You know, that's so their that, decision, that's, not that's yours. That's a problem. Contact tracing is a good plan, but then the reality kicks in is like people don't want their privacy you know, taken away and, or, you know, your name and number given to, you know, the CDC, if it is in fact the CDC, that's. Exactly. Oh, and, and Ellen, trust me, listen, I, I, I work with a number of, of clients of mine that work on elder financial abuse and financial abuse in general. These moments right here, when you're fucked up and someone calls you and you're like, sure, this is the CDC. And you give your social security number. You give your, you know what, Katie, we're going to do this. We're going to, we're going to give you a thousand dollars because we feel, okay, great. Here's my bank account number. I mean, right. that shit's so real and scumbags yeah. at that level. I just deleted like four messages on my phone last night that I didn't even answer or listen to the message. And I was like, who are these from? It's a two minute yeah. message. And then it's some Brutal. guy with an Indian accent being like, we need your information. You bet come in contact. And I'm like, somebody, well, and, I mean, and they're somebody taking advantage. There. Yeah, they're taking advantage oh. of that. They do that anyway. And then during a time like this, like if you go back to the beginning of March and you think about March, April and how scared everybody was to I was spraying down my mail for Christ's sake. It was way you too much that before uh, my OCD wasn't that bad. But, it, you know, in, in June, in, in April, it was awful. But the point is, if all of a sudden you reach out to everybody over the age of a certain, you know, over the certain age and say, you know, Mrs. Jones, uh, you, you've seen the news. Um you know, and we want to make sure that we mail you your check, but the mail's not safe. So we're going to need your bank account. Mrs. Jones is going to give it to them. Somebody like Katie, Katie's fucked up. She's sick. She's freaking out going, okay, well, is that really the CDC who called you? I don't know. I wouldn't yeah. give them any information. I didn't give them any, anyone's information. They also contact the local fire department you live in. And they tell you, they tell them that you have COVID and where you live. So Bill has a couple friends on the fire department and they were like, Hey, is everyone okay in your house? Because the CDC contacts the fire department. My God. Tell them that wow. house has COVID. Okay. Yeah. So more people like learn about you having COVID than I feel like the community learns about there being a sex offender in the community. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, Josh, that's, that sounds like it's totally right. Yeah. It's insane. The good side yeah. is though the CDC did offer me if I needed to um to you know remove myself and isolate myself. Oh, you hit me up. Oh. For and you can stay at. Okay, I'll wait, say that, say that part you, again. We lost yeah, you for like five seconds there. So, oh, so then. they offered me a hotel in Everett to quarantine that they're paying for. Oh, okay. So they have like notice, hotels. Notice when they, she they, said that the CDC offered me, it went on mute. I know it did. It went on mute. Yeah. Itself, right? <laughs> like, yeah. Don't tell these clowns of all people, not these three idiots. Don't. <laughs> yeah. So, so they have hotels. <laughs> they have like areas for people to quarantine in. Yep, they have a hotel, and then they offered me. They picked Everett. Yeah, so do you live? Do you live in Everett? 
apple. I left it's juice berry. I'm like, what? So, so what was what was it like the the Robin Hood Inn in Everett? <laughs> You know, motor the motor in in Everett. We got a nice room for you over here. Yeah, you know, whatever it is, there was a Denny's across the street. There's, yeah. Right. Holy All right, we're gonna put you up at the No Tell Motel. You'll be fine. Yeah. You Look, my wife and I moved, lived in Malden, right next to Everett during this, and I was like, I'm out. <laughs> Too many people. So what what, was, what would have been the the thing that? So you say you did they tell you? So you take that. How long would they decide how long you would have to stay there? Or was it would it be a constant testing situation? It was just like if you couldn't quarantine and you needed to stay there, they were providing it. And they paid for it. And they paid for it. And they offered yeah. me food if I needed food. And some uh, someone could get me medications if I needed medication. And if I needed disinfectant products. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. We, we, should, we should do something here on the show, Katie. Go for it, but do it live on Breaking the Ice <laughs> and see what happens. Hell, I'm going to do it. I, mean, I was going to say, fuck it. If you, if, you, if you don't feel well enough, I'll do it. You know? But I also, did tell them I needed more um, disinfectants. I said, listen, Lysol. I need more disinfectants. Send me some Lysol, send me some wipes. So then the girl called me and she was like well uh i sent you the website for uh stock stock.com and what's in stock in the area i said that's not helping me no you're supposed right. to mail it to me house. right <laughs> yeah. said, I told you I need disinfectants. but she's trying to see they're trying to get you into that hotel i would never go to that hotel because when you go right. in the billies ain't never seeing you again yeah. <laughs> let's get her out of the off the grid we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll 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 tease her with some lysol because by the way lysol is fucking out of business i don't see lysol anymore now i see johnny jackoff fucking wipes in the store and i'm not buying those out of business that's because lysol is like finding gucci in like target i mean that's <laughs> right <laughs> Right, you gotta go oh, to the, the Lysol store for that now. There's there's a whole <laughs> thing in our supermarket where you know you couldn't find anything, but there's this whole section of hand sanitizer now, and nobody's touching it because it's like Billy's hand sanitizer. Who the fuck is Billy? I'm yeah, buying all of it. I don't care. Smell you. <laughs> right, if you, smell you you put that on your hands and you smell your face, dead. But I I but, found out what what it actually is is I I think it's just. Rubinoff vodka, which I used to drink when well, I was you know, some I, just I, selling his vodka. Working, I'll buy it. When I was working at Mass Liquors, there was a bunch of distilleries who were switching over to make hand sanitizer because they oh, were right. So there was a whiskey distillery, I believe, in Dorchester, and they were making it. <laughs> and I remember using it, and it smelled like cheap tequila, right? Oh, yeah. And I was thinking a little bit of lime, you know, this could be all right, you know. and but yeah, they say right. for doomsday prep to always have really cheap vodka and whiskey. Well, the whiskey right. for currency, but the cheap vodka for right. disinfecting. Oh, whiskey. fuck. I bought it and drank it all. Well, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Boston's will kill anything. That's for yeah. sure, man. Yeah. yeah. You think you think Dr. McGillicuddy's and like, and like <clears throat> right now, uh, Dr. McGillicuddy's is a replacement for mouthwash, I think. Hey, it was made oh. by a doctor. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's I've been drinking work. Alan's ginger brandy to help with the body aches, too. That is listen, like a listen. standby. You know, you, do you heat it up? Do you put some boiling water in it? A little no, bit of honey? I've been no, I'm chewing it and I feel like it kills the germs. I yeah. really do. It has Here's what we're going to suggest Burn because, it. Katie, the three of us are doctors on, on the podcast. <laughs> I would suggest you pound an enormous amount of Jameson. No. <laughs> no. I, Give I, it a I show. Always tell, I always tell my wife to drink, um, uh, fireball when she has a, a sore throat and oh. it always works well Bo now it helps his sore throat Bo Diddley swore <laughs> by Grand Marnier when his voice was given out he would have a few shots of Grand Marnier he said it was a good lubricant and uh and of course he he died of cirrhosis of the liver God bless wow him. So, I mean uh you know it's, wow. it's, it's, moderation <laughs> moderation well how are you feeling now Katie how are you feeling yeah, how long like you're nine days in right <laughs> so is everything still the same has it gotten worse just it's I, I almost describe it as just when like you think you're getting better mm. and the next day comes and it's like you've taken two steps back. So it's like yeah. a roller coaster. Does it get does it get worse after 1030? It Ooh. gets better. It's worse in the morning. 
Josh was going for the co- well, he was going for the ragging on the curfew because apparently the curfew stops at nine thirty. I mean, oh. the the yeah. disease stops at nine thirty yeah. here in Massachusetts. I mean, I totally get though. I was thinking about it. If you're in a restaurant or a bar and people are eating off dishes and silverware and glasses, and then you're and sitting your- around with no masks, sitting around with no masks. I get, I get why you should be nervous. Yeah, I get That's it. What a lot of experts really are saying bad the, for the gatherings. It is, but well, I just feel is. like if it's still that dangerous, you shouldn't be doing it at all. That ding, 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 ding. Right. But see, that it, there's so much pressure that they have to have some kind of compromise because then you're talking yeah. about businesses. Not just so like I, gradually closing down, but biz, like businesses closing down by the hundreds. Well, yeah. but it's now, going to happen because this is a disease and right. nobody likes it. it. It shouldn't be a but political so, or a pressure. At, but at the right. beginning of all of this, that's why I was so confused where I was like, why do we have one foot out the door, one foot in? Like, and yeah. it's been the same way the whole time. I was like, this is the money. It's it's dark. Too, many, too many people are making too much money on certain things and they don't want to shut it down completely. But, you know, the, it's it's also the pressure from the businesses and the lobbies where we're saying, like, you can't completely shut us down. You know, my I remember, I my friend, I remember like, the day, Josh, the day after the station shut down, I was at a Railers game. And it was my friend Jim said all they had to do was sh- all they have to do is shut everything down and make us stay in our houses for two weeks and this will go away. Yeah, maybe even three or four, whatever. Yeah, but that's yeah. never even, that's even the countries happen. that did do that, like. <laughs> Italy got nailed hard and like they weren't even allowed outside to go to the liquor store or the store. That was, that was after it was, that was after it was like all over. That was, you know, they, they started doing that when it was just too widespread to control. Then they, yeah, but now they're having another wave of it. So it's like, even if it like goes away, I've like, that, that, that goes to prove that none of us and no disrespect to the human race is not prepared for something like this. No, because it's trying to get rid of us. The, we're the virus of the Genocide. earth. The, er, the <laughs> earth is trying to get rid of, you know, like when your body fights it off, the earth yeah. is trying to fight us. Off. God's like, look, I yeah. put you there and you fucked it all up. You made interstates. You need to. <laughs> and then you don't even pave your roads. You're done. <laughs> but I feel, I feel like definitely shoe. I feel like around i don't know if you remember this but around when af went off the air um february i i yes i remember like the coronavirus was a thing i i didn't remember it until yeah. i was looking through was, some, some old videos and we were like kind of just joking. barely started it yeah just we, barely started yeah, we, we were, were joking fun. about the masks we were yeah. joking yep. about i was saying oh soon we'll have designer we'll have af masks and there'll be like gucci masks and stuff who we, now we were all doing real. that i just listened i just listened to a, an air check of a break i was doing when i was filling in for mornings and i was like i was joking i'm like what's this corona beer thing and i was calling all the right. hospitals I trying complete, to see I who would tell me that was even a thing but I did. I I was thinking about this like a week or two ago. That right before we went off the air, I remember there was like two or three days that you took off, and I think I stayed home too because like all the the symptoms that Katie is feeling. I remember you were feeling, and like in between breaks, you were like, "Josh, I just got to lay down on the floor," and oh, like yeah. during music breaks or commercial, you would be laying down on the floor, and then I started feeling that, and I was in bed for like twenty four hours, and then we came back for one day valentine's day and then we had the weekend there was a holiday and then af went off the air but that's like right before all that yeah. happened i remember i have had it or something like that i think so. maybe i'm like isaiah i have i have an annual bout every year and it's usually around yes. the springtime where it's like a terrible cough it's a fever you know it's achy body it's the whole thing it's like a flu but i remember thing. you Every saying it was like a that. feeling you never had before you were like this is weird i don't know what's going on like it's i it's because he got a wicked strain of weed and he was fucking wild no, i wouldn't have been i would have been just like yeah this is great well listen the uh, katie these two used to give me shit all the time because anytime i would go in to do a radio show there at waf i would douche the studio for 20 <laughs> minutes cleaning microphone I, just that's just the ocd and they're always like i was doing it anyway and it's like, ah, oh, well, 
Maybe and we have a video of it on Breaking the Ice podcast on Instagram. We do. <laughs> You're wiping the sponge on the microphone, the windscreen, and the. <laughs> I'm on the other side of the board, so Josh and I would be over here, and Mike would be, you know, leading the show, producing the whole thing, and I'm wiping everything off, and Mike's like, "You're gonna clean my side," and I just like fling, you know, flung a, a Lysol cleaner at him. But that was always me because if you him. if you think about that environment, look at the microphone Mike's talking into, and Josh, when mm -hmm. various people do it all day. I mean, yeah. I think I did we were sharing uh, equipment, computers, spitting, uh, uh, dip at it, you know, just chewing tobacco all over this. And yeah. Yeah. oh, yeah. And, Gre and Greg, Greg got up in his business on his mic and spit everywhere. And I would just go in prior to COVID and just go, oh, if someone coughed before my show like that, I'm like, you out. Let's go. So, Katie, are what you about guys going to get the vaccine when it comes out? Well, that's that's a good question. Who gets the vaccine when it comes out? They're saying everybody, but they can't. Everybody can't rich, get it. Rich once, old white people. They gotta, they gotta prioritize it. So who's gonna get it first? Uh, I'm hoping. Uh, 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 and we're back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. No, but Good for her. Good at, least for you, her. at least she's been, you know, at least she is there for you and she knows, you know, how things progress, I guess. And she can help you. Yeah. You know, along the way. She's telling me to lay on the, the floor on my stomach so I can breathe better. What you were doing during commercial break, Shu. Yeah, wow. that's true. Have you ever, <laughs> did you ever get tested for antibodies? They could tell if you had it. Well, well, I want to, but I don't know how. I got tested it. once already. And... Not for the actual virus, oh, okay. for the antibodies. Oh, so okay. you have to ask for the antibodies test. Yeah. You should. We should all fucking do that because I yeah. look. I feel like shit coming. Like, I think I was telling Josh earlier on the phone that I was I was coughing. I'm like, again, you cough now, and all of a sudden you're like, is that? Oh, but this is how Katie just described it. Had a yeah. little cough. Yeah. Wakes up the next day, feels like someone shot her in the shoulder. Her legs hurt, toes hurt. Third day, so you know she's got to go to the hospital. But yeah. like even going back to nurses, I, I was talking to Laura's cousin. I'll leave her name out. Um, my Edit. wife, um, who her <laughs> she's a nurse at Mass General, and she got hit like during the peak of it. That was hit hard there, and she was saying that like they weren't even given or like told <sighs> the equipment that they need, like masks. They were told like, oh no, you you don't need a mask. It's only like from touching mm -hmm. and stuff. And then they did get a because remember at the beginning there was a shortage of masks. Yep. And yeah. they they finally got masks and they were like, you need to wear these all the time. And they're like, but we thought that it wasn't airborne. That's what you told yeah. us. And they're like, we didn't want you to panic. And they're like, so we're going home. To <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so, and right. Just because you didn't want us to be scared. Everybody, everybody thought different things at the beginning. Think about when we had Chubby Emu. So, Katie, we had this doctor on a couple of times. Mike, yeah, but they and knew Josh. us were lying to the, the nurses. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, true. Well, but think about what Chubby was. Chubby Emu is the, it's not his name. That's his. That's Sounds his ridiculous. <laughs> Doctor Bernard is his name. Yeah. Doctor Bernard, but he's Chubby Emu on social media. Yeah. But but we but our, our first conversation with him, Katie, was probably multiple weeks into once we went from when we started this podcast. It was shortly after the reason we started it was because WAF went off the air. We did a couple of live episodes, and then we went to this format, and we had Doctor Bernard on, and and Mike asked a question. Okay, so. I'm hearing things about if it's on metal, it stays on metal for this. Wait a minute, is it airborne? Wait, so it's like everybody's kind of fumbling around and then you just don't know. Because well, people, like, people like your mother know. Too. It, was, it was brand new then. It was, right. it was totally new. Nobody had any research on it. Now there's been, you know, six, seven months of, you know, data collection. And, you know, so they kind of have a, a grip on it, I guess. I still well, feel like we're confused, and that's probably because the media doesn't make it any better. Because one side wants to say one thing, the other wants to say another. They made it a political a political thing where before it was like we're all so together, but now it's like well, that lasted Republicans, five Republicans, you don't wear it. Democrats, you wear it no matter what. And <laughs> it's that's sad. It's really sad. And they knew. I think uh, I I just watched this documentary on Hulu. I forget the name of it about how the president dealt with coronavirus. Okay. And um they knew from other countries that you know uh China and Italy they were wearing masks. 
and to naively think that it wasn't going to come here. But, uh, I, but I, like, I think it's crazy. I remember like when it was in China and they were like nervous that it would come here. And I was like, why, do, why don't we just shut down all the flights? And I remember there being like a kind of like a political thing where like they were talking about shutting down travel and like like Nancy Pelosi was calling Trump like racist for saying nobody can come over from China. And then they were like, there's someone on a flight coming here right now with the virus. And I was like, why? It's insane. <laughs> it then, well, it's not just people, it's Josh. Like it's it's everything we're wearing right now is made in China. So if we yeah. stopped everything coming in from China, we'd all be naked right now. No, but I not not no. like not like on a boat. Using, it takes longer than everything we're using. We're I'm in. Our Let's electronics, do it. our phones, everything like that is made in China. And I'm checking. I'm checking. I'm checking my <laughs> stuff we, here. Hold on. But we don't need people returning from vacation right away. I mean, we'll yeah, still take the. the and there's hundreds of thousands of Americans who work over there because half of our industry is based over there, and they all fled, and we let them back in. Yeah, you know. So we can get my, airports. My, listen, in, China. In China has an equivalent to Everett. Stay in a hotel and wait <laughs> until you're better. <laughs> I think my I think my Blue Moon beer was made here in America. No, most likely. Okay, just checking. Yeah. The can. But you're right. Made but my underwear China. made in China. Yeah, Shit. everything's made in China. So they my undies have corona. All the people they weren't going to stop the goods, and there's too much money being exchanged for them to stop that kind of stuff. But also, even back then, I feel like they were saying like that 14 day thing. Like if you're on a boat, it's going to take longer than 14. I don't know. I don't know travel. Does it take longer than 14 days to cross the Pacific? Hey, Not Columbus, around. really? Get your shit straight. That's the Atlantic. You get your shit straight. Oh, <laughs> yeah. shit. You're and right. That's a, that's a boat with sails. Um, I'm not sure how long it takes a freighter to make it over here from China, but, uh, you know. it. I know well, horse and buggy, it's longer than 14 days. Right, right. That goes a little bit slower because the horse has to poop. And the Bering Strait's cold, so, you know. The whole thing. There's a whole thing. We, well, don't we know temperature doesn't about. affect it because, you know, we were told that it would die in the summertime because of the heat. And that didn't happen. Well, well now the wind now now hold on, John Snow. Winter's coming. Yeah. Well, that uh, came in the winter, so that's not going to yeah. affect it either. It's so, fucking, it's gonna it's gonna get worse. Know, temperature well, what, what, affect what, it, you know. Where where's your head at right now, Katie? With I mean, you're dealing with this right now. I mean, it it, it can't be settling mentally. You're raising a two year old, and you're trying to survive. I mean, every day you must be a little bit freaked out. Yeah absolutely i just truly feel like um all i can do is like really warn the people who i care about and and people who i don't even know try to warn them and really hope they listen going to a small party um is not worth it unless you've got masks on and you're six feet apart i wouldn't now being the sick and 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 then being told uh i could get it again Shit. that the antibodies will only last about six months so you could get this again um i wouldn't risk it till there's a vaccine what would I, you say that did, did you tell did you tell those those folks that you hung out with that you're sick obviously you did oh, are right, any right. are any of them sick yes oh shit and so okay. so is 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 you know, you, your your husband and, and your son, they're not leaving the house either, right? Nope. So it's the three of us just trying to make sure I don't end up in the hospital. Right. Good. right. You know, and I, I truly feel <clears throat> like it's, you don't take it that serious till you're sick. Right. Well, that's, I think that's also another part of the problem is nobody was taking it seriously because nobody knows anyone. Didn't happen to me. I don't know. Right. Anybody. Didn't happen to me. Didn't happen to any of my family or my friends, <laughs> you know, Jesus. so they, they wouldn't take it seriously. And that's usually the case with anything, yeah. anything at all. If it doesn't happen to you personally, you just don't yeah. care. You don't know the, the ramifications right. of it. Yeah. That, which yeah. It, it always in my head, it always goes back to this Patrice O'Neill bit where he was like, I just wish these celebrities would just come out and say it like, he was like, I wish Michael J. Fox, like if I went up to him and be like, how come you're not raising money for AIDS? That he would just say, because I don't got that shit. I got Parkinson's. That's why I raise money for that. <laughs> yeah. It's always yeah. until it becomes something you have or someone close to you, then you start paying attention. Right. Yeah. And that's, I think that was a major part of the problem because I just remember a lot of people saying, I don't know anybody who has it. I think it's yeah. just athletes. that. Yeah. Can. 
And then, you know, there's, there's people I was working with that were just like, this whole thing is a hoax. It's a hoax yeah. made to control yeah. us. You know, there's no, there's no virus out there. The hoax know? side of things, the hoax side of things, unfortunately, you know, Katie, we worked in the media for a long time. It's that goddamn business right now that's based on spot money dollars and ratings. And you watch, you know, where these, you know what the networks are. You've got one this way, one that way, and they are polar opposite in what they're saying i just don't get what what the benefit of saying that it's a hoax is like what what you get it's 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 all about (laughs) it's 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 all about it's 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 about getting your attention and it's it's almost cult-like not even almost it is cult-like the media is a fucking cult and they're trying to get you to do that i i get the saying that it's like like dramatizing it like obviously you scare people into viewing but what what are you doing with saying that it's not real like that's Huh? Right. Because that works for them. What do you, you, also, you think Charles Manson's message made any sense? But he recognized that he got some people's attention and said, fuck it. I ran with it. David Duke ran with his KKK bullshit. Right. The fucking Ted, psycho that started Scientology. Right. Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber. You they know, say shit and all of a published sudden. Published in a newspaper. You know? Oh, six people are listening. Come this yeah. way. We'll climb yeah. the hill. You know, I wouldn't trust someone who said it's a hoax. I wouldn't nope. trust them. Nope. And, no, because uh, those people, Katie, are careless. Those are the people that yeah, are going to say, fuck this. I'm just going to go and boom. Right. And they're, they're going to show up at that party with 12 people and not give a fuck and cough on you. And now you're sick. Another another factor with the media is there is such a rush to break news yep. that fact check has become news. really flimsy. So you, everybody wants to break that news first, regardless. Yeah. It's like, well, we're not too sure about this. Whatever. Get it out there before CNN does or before yeah. Fox does or before NBC does or whatever, just get it out there first. You know, we want to be the first one with the breaking news and the scrolling on the bottom of the screen. And but like that. not only being first, but it's also pandering to their audience. So yes. I feel like it's that, ratings. Yes. So it's, they, they know who their audience is. They know what they want to hear. So that's what they put out there. And that's why I'm like, we live in a world now where I feel like TMZ has more credibility than CNN and Fox. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. They're quietly sitting yeah. in the back going, we're going to start the TMZ the national worldwide. Wire. I'm like, what that's, do you guys have to say? <laughs> that's why organizations like Barstool and Vice have done so well. Right. It's because that's they don't get I trust Vice. I trust yeah. Vice News. I trust Vice more than any other news network out there. I trust Dave Portnoy with everything. Go. Right. Barstool. Exactly. Because he doesn't give a shit. Viva. Yeah. Viva. He doesn't, he doesn't fucking give a shit. You know, those guys don't care. And they're, you know, they're more of like a lifestyle you right. know, thing, but and still, he's not, he's not taking with any money to eat that pizza. He's doing that for us. I know he is. He is doing it for us. Right? <laughs> yeah. One bite. Everybody knows the yeah. rules. And same thing with vice, you know, these, these people, they're not getting paid, you know, anything near where like, say, what's his name? Uh, Anderson Cooper's getting paid, but right. that's because, you know, they don't want to have to be beholden to advertisers. And also right. he's a Vanderbilt. So, I mean, it's what he's a Vanderbilt. Who oh, is? Anderson Cooper is? Yeah. Oh, that's right. He is, isn't yeah, he? he is. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Yeah. 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 Well, Katie, listen, thank you so much for coming on with us. And thank you. Thank what you. Your symptoms yeah. are. And I hope it just, I hope it just gets better. And if, you know, if you need anything, you know, you can, you just, you know, you can call us. I mean, you've got a family that's like her family. <laughs> all right. She's all set. Like I say, say, if you need anything, let me know. But her family is like a, a paramilitary organization. Yes. All right? They can <laughs> mobilize at a moment's notice. And if you fuck with them, you just say goodbye. Your lights out. You're gone. Good. Good. You know, well, I'm then you're saying, in good. You I'm and the Billies are in good hands. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, well, can you, can you, uh, can you keep us, you know, obviously through Mike, let us know really, I, I hope you feel better and get better. We you know, wish you the best. Thank you so much. Stay yeah, thanks safe. for coming on. Stay healthy, please. Yes. Josh, Where I'm not mind? coming to your house later now. Sorry. I can't <laughs> I didn't want you here. <laughs> hey, hey. Bye. Be- thanks, right, Katie. Thanks a lot, Katie. Feel better. Thank you. All right. So yeah, that's a bunch. That's tough. That's yeah, tough. That's to a see. bunch. That's fucking real. That's tough to see because she's she is a vibrant young woman who, you know, and she's like one of my wife's best friends. Uh, she's, you know, and her husband actually interned for Rocco. And no Bird shit. Back in the day, yeah. No shit. Uh, yeah, Billy Godet was, um, I met him when I first started working there, and they called him Chico for some reason. I don't know why. Billy doesn't even know why. 
but it was it like just happened. It's like fucking hey, Chico, Chico. Right, yeah, intern Chico, <laughs> you know. And then he, but um, you know, and I have a character known, name. We've known each other for a long time, and it's just that's it's tough to see her so miserable like that. Well, but I, I want I, I want her to do well. I want her to no. do well because it's it's you see people that that heal, and you see people right. that take a sharp turn the wrong way, and that's awful. And I mean, it's, it's so weird how random it is that you see people that don't get symptoms at all that you're like, well, you should have definitely felt it because you're not healthy. Right. <laughs> and they're right? like, no, I didn't feel it. And it's like, you know, like we were talking about earlier, if you don't experience it personally, like Isaiah knows people, I, yep. you know, I know a few people, we know, you know, you know, our friend Bob Hanna, his father passed away because of that, you right. know, so we know him. You know, but people that don't know anybody that's not affected, they're the people that, you know, jump on their bikes and go to Sturgis or run out in the field at the Notre Dame game. They just don't care. Well, part of that thing there is you're 20 years old. And not even like you're going to live forever. Correct. Right. Because I know. And I it is that. the experience. And it it's is like, the experience. You know, yeah. You're just, well, I'll well, just also, have that extra drink. It's not what's it going to do to me? You but know, that's or that's the right. irresponsibility of the fucking adults then that let them go to the goddamn game. Right. But then you, you see how many people whole, were on you, that field. You did. Then you get into the whole thing where it's like, well, you know, if you let only fifteen hundred people into the game, what does it matter? Because I think Josh brought up that point too. It's then like, don't well, let them in. Yeah. Well, that's I'm I'm with that. Like, do what the NFL was do well was doing. Do what the Patriots you know, until, did. They announced this week there will right. be no fans at Gillette yeah, in 2020. And I'm Sox sure people are going to piss and moan. How about fuck you? I'm trying to be safe. And if you want to criticize me, that's cool. I own the Patriots and I'm not letting people in yeah, because I want to be hit. safe. They're taking a hit doing that. Of course they are. It's not like they're infringing on your freedom. You don't that's, have to go to an that's event. That's when I knew that it was or whatever thing was dangerous and real was when like and the nba shut down and then they were the first Bubbled up and then yeah and then the nhl when they started shutting down and then when disney was like we're done for the year i was like if they're if these organizations are leaving money on the table and being like no it, it's not Huge worth it money. i was like this is yeah. scary yeah. well because they they have because at the end of the day take politics out if you own Disney, Josh, if you own the Patriots, Mike, you have a fucking responsibility to mm -hmm. the human beings that walk in your building. That's it. All right. Well, then let me ask you about this. What if yep. you own Ted's Pizza Palace or Pins? Okay. Right. Well, pin, yeah, pin. Okay, pins is a, that's a good medium sized business, and I'm talking and, and a smaller business like oh yeah, you know, Ted's Pizza Palace. I'm just making yep. that up. Yep. Yeah. Um, and so you have a response, like you said, you do, you have a responsibility about letting people in your building. But what if it's like, you don't have that Disney money to fall back on. Then, then there's big problems. And this right. is where organizational wise, the government should help. Again, government, go back to the, the adults in the room, should look at a pins, look at Ted's pizza and say, listen, everybody, Josh made a great point. We're going to ask you to sit still for a month. We are going to give you money to hold you up for that month. Right. Stop, breathe, check is in the mail. We're back in 60 days, 30 days. And no what, one what, fucking did it. What would, what would inhibit something like that? Even if they didn't shut things down completely for a month, but said, you know, you've got to, you can only open for four hours a day. You can only do takeout. You can only take in a 10th of what you usually take in in a week. But right, there'll so be what, money to so support what, you so for why, that. So who who would say, yeah, right. You're you're absolutely right, Isaiah. So what would the reason be to not to not help them? What would the reason be to not help who? Because them? right now our government's not helping them. No, they 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 there was, a, they, there they was did another it wrong stimulus the first time. There was another stimulus that they were working on, and they said, "Well, we're going to drop it right well, now." Do you think the first one the was election. done the right way? They didn't tell no, everybody to sit no, still because nothing like that has ever done before. So of course, there's right, going right. to be flaws in it. Right. right but right, now right. that they've had six months under their belt and they've already done it and they've worked out some kinks, and I'm not saying it's going to be perfect again. There's still going to be problems with it. Why were they waiting? Why were they why were they so concerned with putting a new Supreme Court judge in before they were helping people who were losing their businesses? Because certain people were more concerned about getting credit for it, I think. Like I was looking it went at into an election year. It did, yeah. And that I was looking at a chart where it was like England and Australia and like all these different countries that 
like how much money per month the government has been putting out to its citizens and businesses. And then it said, America, $1,200 for the whole year. <laughs> and Jesus like, Christ. It, it, and just because like, even, you know, it's bad when CNN is grilling Nancy Pelosi. That's like right. who's grilling Donald Trump. CNN was giving Nancy Pelosi shit being like, why yeah. don't you sign it? Just because it's Donald Trump, why don't you just sign it? And she gave a bunch of stupid reasons, but it's like both sides are doing that where they're like, no, we want the credit. We want to make sure we're going to have right. the next four years. Don't and forget, it's like, do it now. Forget, don't forget they're also <laughs> attaching things to it. Yeah. That's what happens with it. You could have a bill out there that would say, we want to make, you know, say they had a cure for cancer. All yeah. right. We, we, we want to give everyone this cure for cancer. So let's write legislation to make sure everybody gets it. Well, I want to tack on something that will help uh, the, uh, the clam industry, you know, right. in Gloucester, yeah. you know, before we sign anything. Away. Okay, well, I want to do something too, because I have a friend who has a factory that makes footballs and he's hurting right now. So I want to tack something onto that. And my I want to get a, a tax cut to my buddies right. over here. You know, because they need help too. This is what you know, lobbyists. Why the this Lakers? Is, is what, what the Lakers got seventeen million dollars in aid, or yep. something like that. Was it, was I don't even know if that's the right number. It was in the millions. That's yep. why the Lakers got that. Yep. You know, it's because they were just like, okay, we got to tack this on so some of my buddies can get some of this. Well, isn't isn't that why lobbyists have jobs because they lobby right. for right. what they're? Hold on, time out. Is that baby in the background on the couch? Oh, what's up? Yeah, is it baby. She's Hi, to, baby. We, we ran all over Green Hill Park today. It was she's Josh. Like, what is uh, Mike's dog's name? <laughs>